Okay, welcome to the Twisted Pair. Thank you everybody for jumping on here with us. My name is Graybeard. My name is Fine Ash Red. And we have Kathy Porterni. Am I saying that right, Kathy? You got it. Think of attorney with a P, Paterni from Cigar Box Marketing. I'm so glad to be here. We are so excited to have you on with us. And and it's kind of funny the way that we connected because you know, all before the uh, the Boutique Cigar Festival, Smoke on the Creek, was starting, you had started sending me, you know, sending both of us private messages on, you know, on our accounts and on Leaf and Grain uh, Society, uh, you know, about, re, you know, remarketing, you know, reposting the marketing stuff. And, and we were absolutely, you know, excited to do that because we support it so much. And then I came across your name as a as a suggestion on uh, LinkedIn. And so I sent you a LinkedIn request and bam, we started come, we started talking, got on a phone call and said, Let, hey, let's do this. Uh, absolutely. And I think that's part of the beauty of what we do, not only from the social media world, but from the cigar world too. It, I find it to be a very genuinely genuinely warm group of people that are really willing to help one another and i've embraced it entirely and i i think what you said is so well put because i think it's like the cigar community and i'm gonna go ahead and add like the bourbon and whiskey community as well and the beer and coffee because i think it's you know goes back to where majority of them are small businesses and even on the big businesses it's kind of like it's something different and unusual and they have to help each other out because they're fighting for their right to exist and I guess it's I don't I guess that's the best way to say it is because sometimes we come across challenges in this industry so we've got to help each other out and part of it I think too is you know we get exposed we're in our little niches in our world right so when I've been smoking cigars for probably the better part of 30 years. And I am, I will say that I started off, my first cigar was a Cohiba. So I started off, you know, in my eyes, wow, that was a really nice cigar. But as, as time went on, I kind of expanded a little bit. You know, I had the Monte Cristos. I had the, the, um, the La Gloria's, which actually became at one point my go-to cigar, right? Whatever the, the Vitola was. Okay, fine. But to give you a little bit of background, if I could just say one thing was um, uh, Armin Caprellian, who is the uh, principal uh, owner of DAV Cigars, he and I go back about 10 years. So when he first started putting DAV together, DAV Cigars, I had been in the idea of what it was going to look like and the design. And because he and I had a in not only what we were doing, but we had a natural relationship because he knew I smoked cigars and I was listening and watching what he was doing. And it was an amazing journey that he was taking. And I was fortunate enough to be with him on that journey. So about a year ago, maybe a little more, I guess around now, he approached me and said, listen, we could, we would love your counsel at the Boutique Cigar Association. Because again, what, who is it comprised of, ladies and gentlemen? It's cigar brand owners. It's distributors, it's retailers, wholesalers, accessory companies, and others who really feel that the industry needs to have a great voice. And of course, headed by Gabby Caffey, Dr. Gabby Caffey of Caffey 1901 Cigars, yeah. you couldn't have a better mouthpiece. So my love of this really was transformed because now I got a chance to take my marketing chops mm -hmm. and my love of cigars and spirits, and I am newer to the spirits world, and marry them, which is kind of where, ladies and gentlemen, and present company, why I'm here tonight. Which is perfect. And so so before we get into this, which I'm so excited, I've been looking forward to, to this and, and, and kind of nervous a little bit, kind of nervous a little bit because, you know, you're you know, we talked about you were going to go through your assessment of what we've been doing on our <laughs> website. And, and so kind of a little nervous, but you know, hey, I'm good. I I can take it. We, <laughs> we, can, we can take it. But uh, we always start off with, with what we're pairing. And so I, I understand you can't smoke a cigar. So we'll start with you on what you're drinking. And then Red and I will go in with into what, what we're pairing tonight. Okay. 
Okay, I am right now drinking a Neat Knob Creek. Which one? Oh God, uh, it is the I'm my husband. Pour, my husband <laughs> poured it for me. There you go. All right. I should actually run down and ask him what he poured because there's three or four sitting in there. But it was a choice of the Knob Creek, the Bushmill, and the Woodford. So all great, all great choices. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm, my mouth is like I am savoring what you all are smoking. So I want to turn it over to what are you all smoking tonight? So I started off with Cavalier. It is the odd job. So that's the bad thing is about whenever you have backgrounds. There we go. Now you can't see me. So it's the odd job um, from Cavalier. It is a uh, Pravada. It came out through Pravada. Oh. So uh, yeah. And these um i've really enjoyed this i had i think i only have one left so um yeah it was and i believe it was a limited you know limited edition when it comes out through but I, but I could be wrong and so um i have been enjoying this uh peanut butter rye okay i got the so i got the recipe off total line i know Gravebeard's like oh my gosh so Here's one thing, if you, um, cause we talked about spirits making your own drink. And the cool thing about Total Wine is they actually have cocktails and they do like cocktails of the month. They do seasonal ones. Wait, so you Total can go, Wines? Total Wines, if, Total Wines? If yeah, you go to wine. their website, if you go to their website, Total Wines website, you can look up different cocktails, say, hey, I want to make a cocktail with a rye. Ooh. Just search it in their cocktails, they'll have it. If you want to make a cocktail, you know, with, um, let's say rum, they've got the different ones and they make recommendations on it. And so I'm doing the peanut butter rye in, oh, you know what? I forgot to put the maple syrup in it. <gasps> but that's less I know I was forgetting. So yeah, so we're just going to try peanut butter rye without the maple. <laughs> so, so that is what I'm going for. I, I am smoking the Padron 1926 mm, box okay. press Robusto. So, so I, I went I went big time for this one. I know. I, I said you were all bougie. I have not had that. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait a minute. So as, as most everybody knows, I just got back on late Sunday night from Kentucky. It was at the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. And this is one of my prized possessions now. When I walked in to, to the Peerless Distillery and saw what they were doing there, I was like, oh my God, I don't even care how much it costs, I want it. And <laughs> so they had the, the just released double oak bourbon. Wow. And That's almost that is black. dark. Right? right? Know, that, yeah. And it's signed by Corky Taylor. Oh, that's awesome. Fourth generation distiller. And he is out there. And I tell you what, he is such the neatest guy. I mean, I could have sat there and talked to him all day long, just listening, just listening to him. And he's talking about his girls. He's talking about distilling, you know, uh -huh. I mean, it was just, I mean, it was almost like sitting back and, and, and talking to my grandpa about oh. life. That's cool. Was, and you needed that. Yes, I did. Yeah. So, so I'm uh, glad that you got to do that. And, so, oh, it, it, was a, it was a phenomenal time. So now what is the taste profile of that? Oh, see, so you're, you're, you're- And I want to know why it's so dark. That's me that, too. Because like we Just, both said, that's like almost black. <laughs> oh, part, part, so so there, here's the color and, and it's part wow. of the packaging. It's, it's, a really, it's a really deep amber. And this is my new glass I got. Very nice. Angels, Angels Envy from the district. Oh, yes. So I, I got to be careful because this is this is uh, a much more, this is a much wider bottom. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. okay, I got to be careful there because this is coming, I mean, this is not high proof. It's coming in at 108. Oh, that's not bad though. Not bad at all. So the Somalia is going to tell us what he tends to <laughs> oh my goodness the black cherries on the nose is just out of this world i mean and, and it's almost like if if you gra grab a brand new bottle of luxardo cherries and you open it up and you just take that in that that's what i'm getting right here 
So, so okay, I want to give a shout out. Uh, we've got Josh Dillingham. Thank you for joining us, Joe, Bert, and oh. Eric Ganelli from all from all the way from Bolivia. Wow, he's, he's down in Bolivia, and and they're all saying hi. What time oh, is it in Bolivia? I, I have no idea. No idea. I'm pretty well. If it's late here, it's probably earlier there. 12, 13 hours. You're you're what? It's it's what seven forty five because you're in New York, right? Yeah, I'm in New York. Yeah, so it's it's almost eight for you. It's almost seven here. Yeah, you couldn't tell from the accent. <laughs> okay. I know. I was gonna say she's she's got that accent there. Uh, you know, it's killer. No matter where I go, they know. <laughs> I want to jump into my really deep southern accent now? Well, hi y'all. Hi y'all. How are you doing? Bless your heart. <laughs> mm. oh so you're getting the the cherries what else because like i'm like I, that is just so dark and rich it's almost chocolate now that he has it in the smaller mm -hmm. glass, right don't you see that chocolate color yeah well and, and see i've got the light kind of shining through it so it's kind of hard to see it it's definitely darker on camera than it, it still looks chocolate yes um the the oils the oils on this is just un unreal. I mean, it's thick. It's very he heavy on the mouth. Uh, I'm definitely picking up some chocolate notes right off the front. You know, some some of that butterly cream chocolate type notes mm. front on it. It's got those. It's got those cherry notes. You know, it's got the standard caramel and and vanilla notes in it, but they're just kind of toned down a bit because of that because of how thick those oils are on it this is i, I don't know that i can bring this one up to bottle night because if i did not oh no do not bring it up to bottle night because i will be upset if you do <laughs> it, it, it wouldn't be coming home with me or i'd be hiding it under the table red you gotta let yeah. me know when you try it yeah this was with this is when we talked about like bottle night etiquette and like that one would be like more than the two finger pour. That would be like a, a lot of people would be trying to do like the the four finger four finger pour. <laughs> Believe me, I've had people do a four finger pour on on a uh, on an old Forester single barrel barrel strength, and that one was coming in at 130 proof, and he did a four finger a four finger pour in a in a rocks glass. Ooh. And a rocks glass. That had to be pretty full. It was. It was almost all the way full, and drank it and came back for another another one. And I said no. Would you serve that neat or rocks? Oh, I go neat all the way. All the way. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's let's get on to what we're here for because I'm excited. So so a little, little bit of background. You and I were talking because you and I both have similar backgrounds. Okay? Yes. Mine is more technical side of it. And mm -hmm. you're the more marketing side of it, but my um, my degree is in advertising marketing. So we were talking about the marketing aspects and and how it seems like a lot of people that's in the cigar industry, unless you're you know one of the the big five, you really don't have a I don't see them having a strong marketing strategy, and so that's kind of what we where we started going so let's let's start this off by you telling us who cigar box marketing is and then i'm just going to let you kind of lead us through what we were talking about of of what you what you do and then red and i will will be chiming in on questions sure well i guess the first thing is cigar box marketing came about only a year and a half ago because i realized that there was a deficit in the industry for good, solid, strong marketing agencies that understood the cigar world. And that was the launch point for me. I've been in digital marketing, traditional marketing, for the better part of, I, I hate to say, I'm going to say bleh, years. It's a long time. <laughs> so like everyone else in my space, we pivoted and we launched and we changed and we adopted all the things that we needed to do as as technology advanced and of course it's facebook it's google it's seo it's it's everything under the sun it's websites it's wordpress wordpress 20 years ago you know 
what, what was WordPress? Do I press words? No. All right, fine. That, like, yeah, I don't know what WordPress is. <laughs> right. It's a, it's a platform to build websites. So what, what wound up happening for me is I realized that I, as I said to you earlier, I could combine my love of the cigar industry with the ability to help the cigar world. Now that cigar world is very wide, as we know, it involves brand owners, right? Those are the guys and gals that manufacture, that they, they go to the plants, they go to the farms, they do the blending, they are on site. They are involved in every step of the way, the pure brand owners mm -hmm. that say, I want this, right? The, the distributors, the brokers, the retailers, the lounges. And I'm saying this because it's such a, it's amazing what, you know, you don't know what you don't know, right? So right. What, what I turned out in, in doing all of my research and realizing that as an industry, because we are a little bit hamstrung, I'll, I'll, I'll say handcuffed really, because there's certain mm -hmm. things that the digital world won't let us do. Now, again, this is nothing new, you know, Cigarette advertising years ago, alcohol advertising, you could do that. Unfettered access. Remember the Marlboro? Right. Movie? Yes. And I think I every girl had a crush on him. Oh, absolutely. And every guy wanted to be him. Absolutely. Yes. I, I bought my first cowboy hat as a teenager. And my mom and dad are like, why are you getting the cowboy hat? And I said, two reasons. One, we're going, we're moving to Arkansas. And we were moving from California to Arkansas. So this was in 80. I, I am I am demonstrating my age there now. <laughs> and so and I said, because because we're moving to Arkansas and because I want to be the Marble Man, I got in trouble. I'm sure you did. <laughs> you know, 13-year-old boy. So I want to be the Marble Man. But I mean, but yeah, I mean it's a great point. Yep. Everything mm -hmm. marketing was was they, they really knew what they were doing back then. It was no problem with anything. I mean, you know, and we've, we've, and I'll digress for one second. We went from, we can't talk about alcohol and cigarettes or tobacco. And now we have the medical world where you watch a commercial and it's like, ask your doctor about this. Well, here's the thing, but your head's going to fall off, but it'll solve the eye twitch. Okay, fine. But that apparently is okay. Yeah. So segueing back. So now realizing that there was this deficiency in what I do to be able to provide a service to cigar industry, and again, that wider, that wider marketplace clients. Why is that? Because I wanted to be credible and honest and truthful in what I was presenting to whatever that was, a retailer, a lounge, or this, because we knew we couldn't use some of the tools and resources that our contemporary people, meaning if I'm selling widgets or I'm selling clothes or I'm selling a toothbrush, I can do paid ads. I can do yes. Google everything. We've become a little bit um, in the fact that we love what we do and we're so happy with our industry. But the reality is we are, we are, not able to get our messaging out despite all of the facts that the cigar world has proven that we are very different from cigarettes or vape or cannabis not disputing just saying and 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 this and, one, one of the things that i've noticed is you know because we have our leaf and grain society page which is classified as a business on facebook and on instagram and we have our website and I've tried to go and get, you know, advertising, you know, to do, to do Google, you know, Facebook turns me down. Uh, Instagram. Google has, will turn you down. Google has turned me down. Amazon has turned me down, you know, unless I do it as, you know, selling, you know, selling their accessories through that. And but, you have to be careful. But, but no click mm -hmm. through advertisements, which we can get into click through advertising, what that means if, you know, if we want to. But, but we we are literally handcuffed on on what we can do and now we're even seeing on youtube to where on your even day, harder if you are if you mention where to get a cigar product on youtube they'll take that video down if we're talking about cigars it's fine but if you mention where to get so if i mention a brick and mortar of you can go and get this patron at a brick and mortar videos coming down yep mm -hmm. 
Well, again, because of all of these things, my blood, sweat, and tears in my research, I'm bringing solutions to the forefront that my clients and anybody out in this wonderful universe can adopt. Because I realize that you're busy running your business, right? You're doing operations, mm -hmm. you're doing sales, you're doing taxes, you're doing HR, you're doing all of the things, the blending, whatever your specific niche is. What you don't have time for and which will never ever change is marketing comes second because it's a luxury. Because when you're out there pounding the pavement and you're trying to sell, you're like, well, if my marketing isn't doing anything for me, it, it mustn't be working. But the reality is we look at it in a different way. So what we do in answer to your question, Graybeard and, and, and Red, is we look at a marketing stack and our marketing stack is defined as what is the customer journey? Any customer, it, it works for anybody under the sun. What is the customer journey? Wow. And that customer journey, in fact, I'm just going to make sure that I have my notes, is designed to help businesses connect with their consumer, whether it's a B2B, business to business, or B2C, business to consumer. Because let's face it, at the end of the day, the manufacturer, right, they're here. Who are they selling to? At the end of the day, it's the consumer. So without mm -hmm. the consumer knowing who they are and what they do, you have, in the Italian sense of the word, you got bupkis. <laughs> I like that. Right? You got, you got nothing. So our goal is to take this customer journey from, we call it the awareness stage. I have found out about you, right? Mm -hmm. So you think about it. I'm going to put it into perspective. You set up a drone. Now, the watchers, viewers, listeners, whatever they're doing, are going to go, oh, I want to learn about that. So what do they do? Let's put it. They're going to say, what, what Padrone was this? And what was it again? Padrone 26. Next. Maybe. Okay, so now they're going to quote unquote go on to their browser, right? Chrome or Bing or Yahoo or AOL, old. <laughs> they're going to start typing in these words. Mm -hmm. Something is going to come up. That Correct. something drives that awareness stage. Now, again, mm -hmm. think of what you've done today or yesterday. How many of your visitors and your viewers tonight? search for something on Google today or yesterday or the day before. Mm -hmm. Put it into perspective. So now they found it. That's the stimulus. Oh, wow. I learned, I saw, I saw something. I heard about something. I'm going to go search for it. The second thing is now I want to find it. So what do I do? Right? I Google it. I'm looking for their reviews. I'm looking for their website. I'm looking for their social media. Question. How many times have you gone on, you found something, whatever that something mm -hmm. is, and you went onto their social pages and they hadn't posted something since like 2019? What's yeah. Oh my thing? goodness. Ding, like, ding, ding. They're not, they're not existent anymore. Exactly. Or, or it's like they're, they're, not, they're not taking the time to pay attention to it. And it's frustrating because it's not updated. Well, now, now, now let me ask you this question, because all of us, you know, well, we're, you know, Red and I are social media influencers, and we have our Latham mm -hmm. Green as well, and you're, you're in marketing and all of this, but let's put our, our consumer hat, and let me have a follow-up thought on that. When we go do that, and we either, A, don't find their social media, or, or we go and find their social media, how long are we engaging with them, or how quick are we going all right, I'm off to find the next. Well, that's the point. You literally have three seconds to make that decision. Three seconds. Wow. wow. Hour, three, that is the rule. Three seconds. But, Hour, it, but that makes sense when you say it out loud. Think of your attention span. At, at the root of everything, and I'll go back to the whole history, at the root of everything, we're either hunters or gatherers. We lived what? Food, shelter, mm -hmm. clothing, safety. Mm -hmm. We're still in that, quote, Neanderthal caveman world. If you're talking about something that I am not interested in, I might be going like this, but my mind is like, oh, I got a shopping list. Oh, I got, I got to get that bottle of wine. Oh, I got to get my clothes done. I'm getting that. Oh, I got to get the car washed. You may be looking at me, 
but your mind is another direction because it's not engaging uh-huh. you. Yep. Exactly. Arrow it down. Now I have everything in front of me and I can click it out. So remember, that's where we are, right? We're still, we went from awareness where I found out about you to now I'm going to research you. So the next thing is, we don't want that to be this standalone thing. So now we look at, okay, let's let's do more research. What does that mean? I'm going to connect with you. I'm going to try and connect with you. Does your website or your social pages have a chat bot? Meaning, can I go on your page and or your website or your Google profile and immediately react and connect with you? Do you have in something that is of interest to me? Not because yeah. you want to sell yourself because that's not what we do at cigar box marketing you will never ever 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 see me promoting me my goal is to say this is what you should be looking at this is what you should be concentrating on let me show you some things whatever those things are after i do my research to help you move forward right so now we have awareness we have findability, we call it, and we have reputation. So now, now all of these- now my nervousness is starting to, to, to pick up a little bit because I know we're coming in there. <laughs> yep. So now all these things start to come into play. I've checked the box. I've checked the box. I've checked the box. The next thing is the conversion. So now I've done everything I needed to do to ensure in my own consumer world, now whether it's a business or a individual, I've done everything I can possibly do to ensure I'm not gonna get scammed, that this is reputable, that they're indeed viable and alive, right? That I'm working with an opportunity that is gonna meet my need. Now, in between the reputation and the conversion, what I also want is I wanna be felt like I have offered you something. I have given you something that you can now take back and think about and massage and work with because it's a value added solution regardless of anything, right? Now I've given you something for no, for nothing. I've given you something. So we've done that. We've done that. Now at that, that is right before what we call the ZMOT, the zero moment of truth. That is. That conversion is now, is there going to be a purchase? Now, a purchase can also be, I want to create a, uh, a, an account. I want a consultation. I want to buy something, right? Whatever, whatever that bridge is to take me as the consumer from, oh, I'm looking around to, I'm serious about this. You've impressed me enough that I want to engage with you on a one-on-one. And we can we can spend hours on the demographics from the civics to the baby boomers, to the millennials, to the Gen X, to the Gen Y, to the Gen Z, about how they manifest relationships. But we can have that for another time. So we've done that purchase. That, that reputation, that purchase, that conversion, done. But right there again is how good were you how good were you at satisfying that purchase need? Because let's face it, not all purchases happen seamlessly. Mm-hmm. There's right. problems with shipping, right? Right, Red? Problems mm-hmm. with shipping, problems with product, problems with delivery, supply chain, timing, gets mm-hmm. lost. It's not what I ordered. That's the secondary level of that zero moment of truth. Now, let's just say it was absolutely perfect. The world is just all bells and roses. What happens at the end of the day? At the end of the day is advocacy. Mm -hmm. That is the biggest focus as a business you can absolutely be focusing on. Why? Because this right here, this advocacy is your free branding. It is your brand ambassadors. This is your free advertising because they go out and they tell other people they did a good job. They delivered, they solved my problem. Because again, rule of thumb, when, and again, 
point it to your own lives. Don't listen to what I'm saying, absorb it. When, when you do something well, a business does something well, you may tell one or two people, right? Because you're happy. But when that business does something badly, you are telling the universe. You're going on Facebook, you're going on Yelp, you're telling your friends, you're telling your mother, you're telling the entire universe, don't use me. Mm -hmm. Is that you you saying you saying that part right there brings back an an, an old an old story where um, Albert Einstein is teaching a class and he's going through the multiplication of nines and he's going down nine times zero is zero nine times one is nine, nine and gets all the way down and does nine times nine times nine is eighty and the class starts laughing. And he turns around and looks at him and he goes, why are you laughing? And they said, because you got nine times nine wrong. They said, interesting. Mm -hmm. But you didn't make a comment on all the others that I got right. Yep. And, and I think that it's kind of, I'm, I'm not sure if it's kind of, you know, I think some people mean it for, hey, don't buy this, don't waste your money on it because this is the end result. But some people take it too far where they go to the extreme, like, you know what I'm saying? But it's kind of, it, as a consumer, I'm, I'm glad for like the positive and the negative feedback. For, for example, Amazon. So if I'm looking to purchase something, first thing I'm gonna go to is I'm gonna look at all those reviews, the stars, the videos, all that stuff. Because if there's like people like keep saying, you know, it came to me without this, 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 and this, you know, um, I'm not going to waste my time with that company in ordering that product. Right. So I think that part is important to it. You know what I'm saying? I absolutely do. And there's two things that I will add to that. The first thing is we always encourage our clients, reviews are reviews. Google, you cannot, for the most part, unless it's just some really horrible and incorrect review you cannot get the you cannot get the review down so you always right. want to flood your site with positive reviews but on on the negative review side if indeed it was a situation that either wasn't handled properly or the customer just has an axe to grind we always suggest you take that negative discussion offline or so and address it personally every of you oh, should, I like that yep, yep every review should be addressed whether it's glowing or completely hate-filled. We're so sorry that you had a bad experience, whatever the situation is, if you'd like to have a discussion with us further, please call us directly at. And I've had some situations where that was done almost verbatim and that same client came back and said, you know what, I was wrong. I was, it was completely blown out of proportion. They handled it beautifully. They address my problems once they knew I had a, excuse me, a problem or a challenge. The second part of that, go ahead, Ash. Well, I was going to say, I think it's like when someone takes the time and it's, they take the time and they want to make it personal and they want to take it, like talk to you and fix it. That means more than a response to your rant and rave that you made. And usually, I mean, I know for me, if I'm not happy, I'm going to go, you know, say, hey. This was my experience. This is what happened. And if they address it, then I'm willing to give them another chance. But, yeah. it you know, it's that personal connection, I think, yes. that makes stands it apart. So I love the fact that you're saying making it personal instead of just saying, because I've seen reviews where people, like the owner comes back, claps back at them and starts, it's very negative. And that makes me look at the owner of the business in a negative light. I, that's exactly what I was what I was going to say on that is because you've got I love that you said take it offline you know post a comment mm -hmm. that says thank you for your comment thank you for your review or something along that line what we will get in touch with you shortly and if I see that then that's telling me that the business has integrity but if I yes. see a business that is sitting there coming back well, I've sat there and I've looked and I can't ever recall you coming in or I don't see any orders from you coming in. And my immediately thought is they're more concerned about being right than addressing a concern. And that to me, that degrades their character as a, as 
as a uh, business. Exactly. And, and so I will, I, I'll move on. Right. Mm -hmm. The second part of that is because we are not able, as we've also uh, kind of ascertained, there's certain things we as an industry get dinged for that we can't say that we can't do. We've come up with and partnered with a branded mobile app company. And this company, and the reason I'm saying this is, this is direct communication between me and my prospect or me and my customer. Think of the retailer, the cigar tobacconist, the, the, the walk-in um, shop, the, the lounge, the bar. They can't, within reason, put out, hey, we're having an event. Hey, we're doing this. Because if they say anything about cigars, and I know there's within reason what you can and can't do. The firehouses do it. You know, it's a big, it's a big night. They can do certain things. But right. we've done more research on that and, and said, well, if you have this, it's a branded mobile app. It's literally an app on the phone, a real app, not just an icon, not just a link. It's a, it's a mobile application, almost like if you had your Starbucks app, right? Now you go to Starbucks, you, I, this is what I want. This is what I am. This is who I am. This is a way for all of our cigar industry clients to communicate directly with anybody that's gone in their store that is a mm -hmm. consistent consumer of their products. Now, not only can they use this app to purchase, depending upon, again, their POS system, what they have, it's gotta be, you know, it's gotta be um, state of the art. It just can't be some Yahoo POS. And, mm -hmm. I, and I mean that in the nicest of ways, but. <laughs> Um, this is a way for our, our peers to now communicate without the fear of being, you can't say that, you can't sell that, you can't do that, you can't offer that. So it not only gives the, the, the client the ability to have a direct communication, they can do specials, they can have a gallery, they can say events, they can do um, a loyalty campaign. How many times do, do consumers uh, have a higher percentage of retention when you have a loyalty campaign where they know if I repurchase and repurchase and repurchase, I'm going to get something at the end of that tunnel. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't even matter sometimes what it is. I mean, geez, I have a CVS app that I use all the time. It's CVS, but I use it all the time. Yes, we get our points because we're going to get 20% off our nail polish or our makeup exactly. or something, exactly. you know? Like $10 a month, you know, CVS care card. It doesn't matter because it's a perceived value. And what we do, the perception sometimes overrules the value of what it really is. But that's what our industry, any industry, we want to give value. But as a, as, as a thank you to the consumer, again, as a business mm -hmm. or as a, a B2B, B2C, we want to show appreciation, but we also want to communicate with them and, and, and with unfettered access that we can say, we're selling this cigar or this accessory or this bourbon, and no one is going to say to us, you can't do that. Would, now, would you say that that also applies to, because you know, we're, we're talking a lot about, about the businesses, you know, both in you know, cigar and bourbon, because this applies to really any business where they have a, a product revenue stream. Okay. But there's also there's there's another side of it that I think that this applies to, especially with the value and the perceived value, when it comes to like right now, Leaf and Grain Society. I mean, we have swag, but that's not a really a revenue stream for us. Right now, our revenue stream is more in the branding and then in the the marketing aspects of it of getting our name known because we're both social media influencers we have podcasts and stuff like that there's got to be a perceived value there as well otherwise we could just be throwing on a podcast and get you know get minimal viewers for people who come in you know, and, and you, like, you know, on, on websites, so the a website, you know, the stick-tivity, how long are they on the website? Well, for, for us with our show, how long, are, how long are people tuning in, watching the show, and are, are they just logging in, tuning in, and then immediately dropping off and going on, on to the next one? 
So there's got to be that perceived value that they're getting something because while they're not paying for us, paying a, us in a monetary value, they're paying in time because they're yeah. giving up their time of the day, minutes to hours to listen, to watch, you know, listen and watch, uh, you know, and gather the information of what we're trying to present. So I think that applies outside of just your your uh, product based industries. Yeah, it absolutely does. But I think the bigger question is, how do you break through the noise? And I don't mean noise in a negative way. I mean, yeah. there's there's a lot of wonderful podcasts out there that are very unique. But how do you differentiate? And what is what is your offering? Right. I, I think that the consumer want always wants something, whether it's knowledge or a discount or a freebie or a FOMO or a, or a BOGO or whatever other acronym you want to use. But breaking through, like, and I said this the other day, you know, Kim Kardashian for all of her good and all of her bad, she is a huge <laughs> influencer, right? Now, whether you love She's her, huge, yeah, she is. Do I do I subscribe to her way of thinking? Do I want my absolutely bare ass posted on a magazine? Probably not. Oh, come on, Gabby. I'm sure it's a great ass. <laughs> <laughs> but but the reality is, is it a um, is it a and I and I and I feel this way. Is it a sex factor? Yeah. Is it a cleavage factor? Is it a um, an opportunity factor? Is it a uh, what's in it for me? That's the hard part to differentiate. And as our industry, I, I feel that sometimes we've become a little less professional and luxury, and we've become a little bit more freewheeling, everything goes, 1960s flower children, let's have sex in the dirt during the Jimi Hendrix concert kind of a thing. Now I know I'm dating myself, but that's the truth. That's not- I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. There you go. But, and, I'm, and I'm gonna say that because I love the fact that you brought up, because like, and, and I'm gonna kind of say, you know, I, as a woman, I do have advantages versus gray beard you know, and, and, but my thing is, is I am all about the classy. I'm not going to be showing off my cleavage. cleavage. I'm not going to be showing off my hoo-ha. I'm not going to be putting on a bikini for y'all. I'm sorry, but you know, I believe it. class is very, very important. And yes, whenever some people bring out that and they're getting that attention, but my, like when, in the part of the marketing, yes, it goes, but how long do those people really stay on or are they really on just to see the next peekaboo? Do you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. And, and I will never mention three or four people that I'm thinking of, but I will tell you this. There is, when you're looking to pivot, am I selling a product or a service that is being purchased right? Or am I selling my concepts and ideas that is being lauded over? Now, everything has its, right? Everything has its purpose. You use what you have, the assets that you have to help you move forward. I know as a woman, Red, we can definitely identify with this. Mm -hmm. If I walk into a room of all men, I know that I'm at an advantage. Sorry, guys, yeah. that's how it is. I'm getting older. It's just how it is. But because, but I also want to come across as being professional and respectful. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. even in, in my business, like I said earlier, you will never see me promoting me. I'm always looking to promote my clients. I am, how I defined myself recently was I am the puppet master, but not in the controlling way in the way of saying, I am going to help you pull the strings to get you to the next level, whether it is your website or your social media or your client retention or your branded mobile app, or even in a consultative nature. It's like, if you spend less time worrying 
about the next marketing opportunity and more time sitting in front of your customers, your patrons, the people that are making you money, then by rights, I am part of that team. My team is part of that team. And I have both internal people and external people because I have multiple, multiple, multiple solutions to fit that need. So it doesn't really matter to me what size business you are because mm -hmm. I started out as a person of one. Mm -hmm. So I'm sympathetic to that. And, and I'm always conscious of what can I do to help you get from the hobbyist to being a Padron, to being an AJ Fernandez, to being a Fuente, mm -hmm. being a Cohiba, right? Maybe that's not your goal, but your goal wasn't to be friggin' poor and hemorrhaging money either. Right, right. So, so what, let's, let, let's, let's get into the meat of this and let's talk about, you know, if you want to, you know, use us as an example, let's talk about how you would go about this process with, with one of your clients. Right. So the first thing, that's a great question. So the first thing that we do is always offer an independent, just a five point checklist analysis to do two things. One, to show you that we know what we're talking about. And two, to give you something that you can walk away with. And if you decided not to work with us, you could implement. And we look at things like your Google profile. Most of our peers need a Google profile. They don't have that profile card. Why is that important? It's important because Google is the, how do I, how did I phrase this two weeks ago? Google is the hormonal 16 year old girl. <laughs> Ignore her at your peril. <laughs> that, that, now, is, that is powerful right there. Yeah. Now remember, oh, okay. So here's the thing. And I tell, this is my, this is my disclaimer. We either know a girl, we were a girl or we are a girl, right? Period, end of story. So if you ignore Google, the Google, the Google goddess, that is a detriment to your business. Why? Because part of your search engine optimization, part of the reason people will come to your website and where you quote rank when people search for leaf and grain or gray beard or ash red, they're looking, this goes back. Remember, I'm going to take it back. This goes back mm -hmm. to findability. How do I find you? Right. I was made aware of you, but now I'm looking for you. And remember, three second rule, I can't find you. It's like dropping gum on the floor. Do you pick it up in three seconds? Yeah, okay, fine. You need to be focused. So now getting back, five point checklist. That checklist covers, what does your Google profile look like? Do you have a Q and A? Do you have hours? Do you have a way to be contacted? Are you posting to it? Do you have all the information that you need, right? Five things. Second thing is Yelp profile. I know Yelp is a little bitchy when it comes to certain things, but we'll work through that. We'll deal with it. But we look at Yelp. The third thing we look at is your social profiles. What do you guys think, ladies and gents think, is the most important thing? Comments, likes, or shares? Oh my God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with shares because like, if, you're, if people are sharing your stuff, that means you're getting more out, word of mouth. I feel like I'm in school and I'm like filling the test already. You got it, Red. You got it. Because, because that also helps you, right? So that's, we have mm -hmm. now your Google profile, Yelp, your social media. Then we have your website. Off, I, I am a WordPress advocate. I do everything in WordPress. That is where I am. Whether it's a, a templated site or it's a custom site, we offer both. We want a WordPress site. We want to make sure that there are no uh, link errors, that there's enough content, that the descriptions are strong enough. So when the quote Google bots come in, they can make a distinction of, oh, these people, right, have an mm -hmm. idea of what we do. Because think about this, and I'll use this analogy. All right, for the ladies in the room, it's walking down Main Street, New York City, Fifth Avenue, all the beautiful stores. For the guys in the room, you're in Home Depot going down the aisle of of, of power tools. All right? Yep. So you're walking down this aisle and it's, it's two identical aisles. We'll do the ladies first. You <laughs> walk down 
and you see you walk to this this store and storefronts walk in the first store and it's it's like virtually empty there's five racks there's an article of clothing on each rack right you can picture this right oh, yeah i'm gonna go and go all right what do they do I don't really get enough of a sense of what they sell, what their offerings are, what it, what it appeals to me. Because at the end of the day, I'm the consumer. What's appealing to me? You walk out, you're disenfranchised. Okay, fine. You walk into the next store. The lighting is perfect. There's floor to ceiling clothing. It's in every color, style, shape, size, fabric, design. Oh, I'm in heaven. I yeah. know what they do. I am going to now go to the store and I'm going to buy from this store. Same thing with the guys. You walk into a store, there's an old, it's Harbor Freight or Home Depot. There's like three things on the shelf. What the hell? I, I, I'm looking for this blah, 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 right? I need a circular store with this, blah, blah, blah. I can't find it. I'm out of here. Walk into the next store and it's literally power to heaven. You're going to shop at that store. Take exactly. that Right? Take that back to what we're talking about. That's Google. Google says, I got an idea. In, in the Brooklyn terms, I know what they're talking about. Right? I got it. So we understand we need to have content. It needs to be fresh. It needs to be web optimized. It needs to be have all that, that the uh, descriptions and the, and the title tags and all these things. That's your website. So if you don't have that, Google is, eh, I don't know. Basically, like when you're saying that, your SEO. SEO. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. I was sitting there trying to think. And it's like you're sitting here and you're, I'm having a lot of aha moment. I'm enjoying my pairing. But like, in, in, and the reason I say that is usually whenever we have looks on our face about something, it's usually about the pairing. But what you're saying, I'm just like, huh. Oh, yeah. That's common sense. Why haven't I thought about that? So, I mean, it's beautiful. I love it. You're, you're, you're saying things that, that I've told my clients on the other side, you know, as a digital transformation architect, which I know that's just like an airplane that's just going over everybody here except for you. I've talked with, with, I've talked with Fortune 5 clients and I'll tell them, it's like, look, if your customer goes and hits your website or pulls up your mobile app, you have got five seconds. You've got five seconds essentially for that website to load and for them to know what it is that you're doing. And if I'm, if you are selling, if you're, let, let's say you're, you're Pizza Hut and within five seconds, I don't know what your special of the, of the day is. I don't know what your special is. I don't even know what you have to do. And I have to go and find, search, find where the menu is or find where your specials are. I'm going off to Domino's. I'm going off to Papa John's. I'm going off to some gourmet pizza that, that may be right down the street. So you've got a fraction of a moment of people's time because, and, and it hasn't always been the case. Hasn't always been that case. There was a time to where people would wait for a page to load and would be interested, but that's when the internet was new. And now we're in this fast food society mentality to where I can call up, I can, mm -hmm. I, can, I can get on my mobile app, talking about mobile app, and I can punch in my order and go down to Starbucks or Chick-fil-A and drive up, scan it, it, or even go and not even go through the drive-thru, go over to the, the, the mobile order waiting area. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm here and they're bringing my food out for me. So we're expecting value. What you talk, what were you talking about? We're expecting value immediately. And so that's, I, I have consulted a number of different website, you know, web developers in the cigar world and, and outside of the cigar world was where it's a, okay, I know who you are, but if I didn't know who you were and I come to your website, and I have to scroll down to see what you're doing, I'm gone. Yep. I'm gone. And 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 for me, and I'm coming at this as a different from a different perspective, 
because, you know, I'm not in like the website world. I'm not, you know, in that. And I can completely understand what you are saying because I don't have time to sit there and hunt and look, you know, I mean, that's just how it is. I wanted that instant gratification. And, you know, I'm, I think I'm gener generation Z or X. I don't even know what I am, but I'm that younger generation where I expect it to come up immediately, you know? Um, I, so from my end, yeah. so, I mean, it's just kind of, you know, it's like what you're saying is just like, yeah, a hundred percent get it. And the, the thing is, is like, we want things, you know, we want, we don't want a small selection to choose from. We want a plethora and we want it custom done because now in today's society, we can get things custom done to what we like, what our preferences are like. And even and if you think about it, and this is what you're going to say, is in the cigar world, we know what we like. We know what we're used to. We're willing to try other blends that are like that or spirit and say, hey, I really like rye. So I'm not scared to try this drink because it has rye in it. Or I really like San Andreas uh, wrappers. Right. So if it has a San Andreas wrapper, sign me up. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, I mean, like my, right now my mind has just exploded good because what you're saying is like duh you know but it's got that it's major value to it but that's where we come in and I'll, and I'll take it even a step further facebook pages right because let's yes. face it you know i just i just put out a a, a an a study and hubspot did it and i love hubspot but they did the study of like the the winners and losers of social media. And of course, Facebook was the big winner. Okay, now that makes me, that makes me scared about what you're saying about our, oh, like no. my social media. I, I think our Leaf and Grain website is beautiful because Graybeard takes care of it and he knows his stuff. But now I'm like, oh my gosh, did she look at my social media? I'm like, oh. Well, I promised myself I was not going to actually diss you guys online. And I have no reason to. I, no, I we we tr trust me. We I, take constructive feedback. Yes, yes, I, I because I, we want to grow. We 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 want it. So if you, if you see where we can improve things that we're doing wrong, I I want to hear because I I yes I've been doing this for for almost thirty years since the internet. Since was, Al Gore invented the internet. Yes, yeah, since Al yes. Gore invented the internet. But before Al Gore invented the internet, so, <laughs> but but what I know, was in high school. Is that my eye? I know I know one side of it. Yeah, and, I, and I get it. So I I I'm, I'm I want to hear because we want to grow, and and, and let let me let, let me give you our, our our kind of our mission statement our vis our vision statement, and I'm going to summarize because I don't have it memorized because we just kind of changed it up a little bit is leap and grain is really we're bringing out the awareness of, of pairing cigars with food whiskeys wines beers beverages all, all of it and so that that's our goal and we want to be established as the go-to group the go-to agency for pairing cigars. Now that encompasses a lot through education, through events, through um, you know product swag, all of that. All of that comes in to help grow and help achieve that vision. Now the question comes in outside of Twisted Pair because we we've got a we've got a really good following of Twisted Pair. I can think of four, four people that I would classify as our ambassadors. Okay. You know, outside of the Leap and Grain team, which we've got six people on our team, you no, know, seven people on our team. Okay. Outside of our team, I can think of four people that are in, in ambassadors for Leap and Grain, but it's primarily through Twisted Pair. But that's one channel of what we're doing. And so, you need multi-channel. There's there's yeah. absolutely, absolute. We, we always tell people, omni-channel marketing, you know, years ago, direct mail, print, magazines, that was the way to go. Right? Yeah, but we've migrate, right? We've migrated 
over to a digital society. It doesn't mean mm -hmm. that direct mail doesn't work. It, it is a different way of effectiveness. But what we look at, to give you an example, go to a business's Facebook page. Mm -hmm. I don't care what it is. It doesn't even have to be the cigar industry. If you look at the cover photo, LinkedIn, Facebook, right? Even Instagram. Do you understand what they do? A lot of times it's a pretty picture, but I don't have a call to action message on there. I don't know what you want me as the visitor, the consumer, whatever I am to do. We are you know, like lemmings running off a cliff, they all follow each other off the cliff. Well, that's mm -hmm. human nature, right? We follow. Yeah. You, have to, you have to direct us. You have to tell us what you want us to do. Like, share, follow. Visit our podcast. Do this, do that. It's extremely important that we convey those messages. Now, remember, it's a very fine line, I believe, from being an kit for the client and saying, listen, this is what we're here for you to do. But also from the client's perspective is telling their customers, this is what we want you to do. We want you to, you know, um, follow us. We want you to advocate for us, but they won't get to that point. Remember the customer journey from awareness all the way to advocacy. They're not going to get to the advocacy stage until they actually went through every other stage. There is no way to hop. We're not bunnies. We don't come from this to this. We need to understand. And, and I'm glad you said that because like what one thing I'm going to say is like for me is everybody, I get direct messages and I'm going to share this with you um, on my Facebook page. I had beautiful comments from people and <coughs> y'all are phenomenal. I love your program. I love what you're doing. They're telling me that and I am so appreciative of that. But I want you to share it. I want, so that's my thing is like, how do I get them to share it? And like, I do have some people that share our posts. And I know that like a lot of times that like for me, I post Instagram and Facebook, you know, versus the website. And it's just because it's more convenient for me. You know, it's just easy. I can do it that way. Um, but I'm just kind of like, okay, thank you so much. But I want to tell them, hey, spread the news, spread the gospel. We're here. You know, we want you to share this experience with other people. That is a very, the biggest conundrum I think we have, because at the end of the day, what are our goals? Our goals are to grow our business, grow our visibility, grow our relationships. And when you have to have a conversion practice. So to your point, let's just say all of these people that decided they love you to death, they love gray beard, they love leaf and grain, they go to the website. What happens when they get there? They're gone within, I mean, honestly, because I look at stats every day, they're gone mm -hmm. within a matter, within a matter of seconds. And I'm trying yeah. to figure and, and and we and now granted we were we were bad about posting content where we wouldn't have content posted, you know, for a couple of months. And I'm trying to get it, get us to where, you know, myself included, where we're posting new content at least on a, you know, at least a, a, once a week or every two weeks, just because, you know, mat matter of time, it's, it's only really, you know, as far as that, it's, it's, it's only really three of us that are doing that. Mm -hmm. And so, part it's of my mainly opinion, Graybeard. I'm going to give it kudos to Graybeard because he's mainly doing that. And, and part of my conundrum is is where do I focus? Okay, so as as, as you've seen, I've I've been trying to post more content, trying to reshare content on LinkedIn to try to get more people, you know, seeing us from the business side of things over on LinkedIn. We've recently added Twitter, and so I'm trying to add more there. We're, we've got our following on Instagram as well. And there's, unfortunately, there's not a lot of great tools unless I spend a lot of money on one to where I can take something 
and I can post it out to all of those channels. Now, I know that there's tools that's available for that, but in order for me to be able to do that, I have to invest more money. So then it's a matter of, okay, where am I investing the money at? Right now, I'm trying to invest the money into, into the tools for our show because it's been shown that our show itself, this twisted pair right here, and the our audio content is really where it's starting. People are coming in from that way and then trying to get, maybe I can try from that way, get them to go to the website and get them to go to, you know, the articles and read what's, which is really where a lot of the meat of our content mm -hmm. is going to be. And I want to get them there because one of the things we want to do is to, well, we're not want to, we're going to do is mm -hmm. to create a certification program to where people, we can certify people to be cigar pairing experts. So the, I think that, one that's of the challenges, the no, no, I think one of the challenges, I can't find a Google profile for you. So you don't have a profile card that I could find. So I, how does one get, I know it seems like a basic question, but no, how does no. one get a Google profile? And you create you, you, you literally create. create it. You create it. It's there is no, I'd love to tell you that it's some mystical oracle thing coming down with the smoke and the mirrors and the sparkles. It's not. You create a Google profile. That will help. You don't have one that I could find. That's wait, number one. Because I run I run a couple of web analyses and mm -hmm. I can pretty much get a basic audit on almost any company that has a Google profile. And there are things that I can tell you that would make your head spin in a good way and a bad way, right? Because I can put all the good stuff together and I can put all the bad stuff together. But I can't find, your website is beautiful. It's a WordPress website. You have social media content, that's terrific. You have the podcast, you have great content. But the other part of the challenge is that profile i can't find it it's just nowhere and i've looked you have the instagram page you have all the things that you need to succeed now again you have to remember you're cutting through noise you're cutting through what the differentiating factor is between you and everybody else that's mm -hmm. that's the rise up and that's the downfall it, it's it's a statement. It's not good or bad. It's just where it is. Because at the end of everything, what is the experience like? What are the offerings? What am I giving out? What is my perceived value? Who are we? What are we doing? What niche are we filling? So perhaps the certification is another step in that direction. But again, how you're presenting it and that you, you both do a wonderful job of that. That's the key is where you're going to go from there. So that's one of the things that I look at, you know, aside from, like I said, your Yelp profile and all these other aspects, I look at those things. So that, that would and, be my like first suggestion. Love it. Thank, I, and I, I'm taking mental notes because I don't want to be, you know, sitting over here, you know, writing down and I'm going to be tabbing out. No, you can always call me. <laughs> but that, that thank you and 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 i have looked into creating a google, a google profile and i always get stuck on it at i always get stuck somewhere in there and and because we don't have store hours you know we no, don't get stuck here's the thing you want to make sure you fill it up completely like i said we're going back to the google gods and a, and a hormonal 16 year old girl you need to make sure that you have this profile card because now as things continue to change and Google's always changing, Facebook is changing, right? The, yeah. the world cookie, right? You know, people are like, what's a cookie? Don't worry about it. Just remember, it's going to be a problem later on. Um, it's, it's things that we don't or do realize. And as digital marketers, it's constant. It's what the hell it's everything is changing. And, and I think it's kind of another thing is, it's like what we were saying is when you're restricted because, you know, it, it's that thing. It's like, for example, I posted and I put a song 
on and it, this is hysterical. So my, our first uh, post that I did for y'all, I put big energy, which is a song and they had it available for music for uh, Facebook and Instagram. So whenever you get your music, you have songs that you can choose. And I got blocked. I couldn't share my story. And it was instrumental. It didn't have any words or anything. And they're the ones who suggested the song. And I'm just like, I face, uh, like I messaged Graveyard and like the rest of our people. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I got a warning from Facebook and Instagram saying that they can't post this. And it was their freaking song. And so I'm just like, even when you use their song or you're using their thing, they red flag you. And I'm just like, I can't wrap my mind about it. I really can't. The, the, thing, that I, the, the, the thing that I'm having the hardest time figuring out is, is how we describe ourselves. Because, yeah, because we're, we're across multiple platforms. We we do not we do not sell. I mean, yes, we have our own line, our own cigar line, but we don't sell our own cigars through through our website. It right now it's in one store, and I'm not going to mention the store because I don't want this video to get brought down. But it's you know we have our own cigar line. We don't have our own drink line, so we can't really put ourselves in that food, whiskey, wine, you know category although that's what we talk about so are, are we are we multi are we a media so i, I typically put us in as a media company mm -hmm. but we're also education media is is our channel but what we do is education well mm -hmm. we put ourselves in education then it comes into a different type of category and different other types of reg regulations that may come into play because we're not we're not a college we're not you know, elementary, right. you know, higher level education. So it's like, how do we categorize leaf and grain? Twisted Pear is is the media, is the multimedia, but that's one of our shows. And we have other segments. We have other shows that we do as well. Mm -hmm. So how do we classify what leaf and grain is? That's that's one that's just I'm like, I, I've even mentioned and we utilize a lot of tools. I ask in our in our in our group meet chat how do we classify ourselves but i think you already do quite well because if i remember you talk about education right the food mm -hmm. and pairings you know all of those things the only thing i would probably suggest and again this comes down to the personal the heartstrings is your stories like where, where what is your story we tend to gravitate towards things or people that we can relate to, right? Think about it. We do mm -hmm. business with people we like, know, and respect. Yeah. So what's the story? Um, I would be um, more inclined to understand how you got together with Red. Like, what is that all about? What is the story behind that? Your relationship with with spirits your sommelier um journey journeys those are the things that i personally feel are endearing because sometimes we tend to be a little bit what's the word i'm looking for um antiseptic say it <laughs> antiseptic right we're we're a little bit yeah. far off i i am always one to wear my heart on my sleeve right i'm always one to be very vocal, you know, watch my cuss words, but be very vocal and try to relate to um, who I'm talking about and what I'm talking about. We we had a good question and um, it, this one was asking is, Kathy, should LNG be verified on Instagram? Yeah, I, you know I, I see that a lot, like a lot of things are verified. So, I mean, that was a great question. And so I'm gonna ask you about that. Well, yeah, there's a definitely a verified badge and what that is involving. Yeah. Do I think it needs to be authentic? Yes, this is, the, this is the qualifications. You have to be authentic. 
right? It's a real person. It's a real business. It's a real company. The, I think the unique part or the uniqueness gets a little bit lost because there's so many of us doing what we're doing. Yeah. We be, right. We have to be very careful in what we do. Now, leaf and grain is, is a pretty unique word. It doesn't have cigar in it. It doesn't have spirits in it. So we want to make sure that our uniqueness, in fact, it's funny you say this because another client just asked me the same thing earlier today, right? Obviously that's so that's authentic and it's being unique. The third thing is that it needs to be a public account. So it needs to have a bio, a profile and be active. And it also needs to be, and I, and I think this is, this is part of the challenge with verified, the notable part, Okay. right? Notable. So they define it as if I'm not mistaken, like really well known so again i'm going to go back to big ass kim kardashian right she's very yeah. oh yeah everybody you bring up her name and everybody knows ass and drama right yeah exactly but it's still that's verified um it needs to be featured in multiple news sources right not paid and not sponsored almost like being on Cigar Journal, Cigar Public, uh, Half Wheel, Cigar Coop. Hmm. And the next thing is you need to apply for it. So that's pretty much how you get verified. You know, based on those four requirements, that being verified is not easy to obtain. No. And you just submit, you submit the request, the application to apply, and then you get the, you know, the badge. It's hard. Okay. And another question is, is because, you know, it's, okay, so we have leaf and grain, and because there's so many multiple aspects of leaf and grain. So you have twisted pear in there, then you also have Greybeard. Then you have myself. So would you recommend that Greybeard and I get there? And, and I'm going to say Spice Man as well. Yes. Because he's our third partner. Right. That we all get verified. So it, it kind of expands it more. But you'd all be independent. Based on the qualifications, you'd all be independent. So you and and Greybeard and, and what, Spice, um, Spice Man? You would all be independent. Yeah. Yep. And that that is always the conundrum because you're trying, you can't, from what I understand, and I reserve the right to come and you know and contradict myself, but mm -hmm. there are multiple factors to determine by Instagram, which of course is also Facebook, which is meta, if you meet yes. the qualifications. So there's there's nothing that says whoever is meeting these qualifications, if it's some AI bot that says, boom, 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 they're done. Or if it's a person that actually sits behind the scenes to a degree, I mean a person and says, okay, they meet the, they meet it. That's the challenge. It can't hurt. But again, you've got to be able to prove that you're well-known, highly searched, and they're going to look at your statistics, just like I would. Like, I can turn around and look at all your stats and say, okay, you know, I know you're a WordPress site. I know you use PayPal. I know you use WooCommerce. Um, I'm trying to look what else. Uh, your blogs are WordPress. You're using, um, what else? Let's see. I'm going down the list. Um, what your web server is Apache. You know, I can, I can look and find all of these things that tell me who you are in the background, what's going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Same thing. They're going to look at more. They're going to look at the statistics. They're going to look at your, the components. Do you have all of the things that they're saying as a criteria? And again, it's a little bit of a, I think it's a little bit of a quote, gray area as to the qualifications because they're saying, well, who determines what's notable? Is a billion people notable? Is a million people notable? Is 50,000 people notable? What's notable? What's researched? Are they looking yeah. at the content? If I'm, if I'm going to go to like SEMrush, or I'm going to go to Moz, or I'm going to anybody else, what's, what is the threshold? 
And we don't know that. I don't know. And, and that was a great question because someone was like, in order to be verified, do you have to have a certain amount of followers or, you know, but was all that all that plays into it. But according to, like I said, according to the qualifications, and I'm going to say that, yes, being searched now searched. If someone is searching for you, you have a brand that is a well-known brand and you're, you're like, again, the news sources, not paid and not sponsored, but what is actually, are you being searched? So I, you know, I, I wish I had all of the answers in the little, you know, I'm going to be like Harry Potter or, or what's her name? Hermione. Yeah. yeah. Would love that. Well, I, I can tell you from from our Google Analytics and from our um, WordPress Analytics, or you know, really, really the Google Analytics and, and search trends that I see that bring to us is not leaf and grain society, but it's content that we have put out. So I'll, I'll see I'll see searches for Evan Williams because we did an article a recipe with Evan Williams in it. I'll see uh, searches for cocktail recipes because we have cocktail recipes on there and, and we'll show up on there. I don't see, and I spent some time, I spent some time, you know, going in and working on our metadata, working on our, our, our keywords, our titles and such, and trying to get the words cigar pairings. In, in there as well in each of those and each of the, each of the posts and each of the pages that we're building out so that maybe that those will be picked up and so as people are searching for cigar pairings leaf and grain will will come up in in that area i, I love the fact that you know and, and i'm going to spend some time focusing on on getting our our google profile fixed and and up in there continue working on our, our SEO. So, so for, the, for those who, who don't know what I'm talking about with keywords and title and, just, and meta descriptions and such like that, all that has to do with your search engine optimization. And that's what Google, that's what being each of the different search engines are gonna utilize to, to rank, uh, you know, where you come, end up in, in the search engine rankings. And it's important for us to get that up there because as what you described, somebody searches that, they're not going to search through, go, go and hit, even though 25 pages worth of results are going to come back up, they're typically going to look at the first or second or even third, you know, maybe down to the fifth entry in there. And if they don't see it, they're going to go in and they may search, try to refine their search. But otherwise, they're going to just going to be going, going on you know, clicking on one of those top five that comes up. And so we want to be up in there. So Absolutely. And that, these, are, and that, these are we're working on. But well, and that brings me to the next one was like hashtags because we're big about, I know it's like hashtags. Everyone talks about a hashtag. Like, should they be specific hashtags? Like, because we do cigar pairings, we do you know, crafted beers, we do hashtag IPA. Does that play into the search whenever people are looking for things? But remember, part of the reason for using hashtags, hold on, I'm just gonna look at something. Part of the reason for using the hashtags is because when people are searching for something, right? Remember at the bottom, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do. I am looking for something that interests me. It's for the consumer. So mm -hmm. if I'm using hashtags, you know, when you go onto your Instagram page, it says, you know, top uh, accounts, people, hashtag, you know, it looks at all those different things. Mm -hmm. What if what people are looking for? So the question is, you want to look at how uh, the, the uh, difficulty, right, or the mm -hmm. number of people that are searching for cigar pairings, spirits pairings, cigars, uh, bourbon you know, again, it's the it's the the flux of using those words. Are people going to use spirits? Are they going to use cigars? Are they going to say bourbon cigars? Are they going to say uh, rum cigar? Ooh, bourbon cigars. cigars. I'm sorry, you just like you said bourbon cigars. I'm like, huh? We haven't hashtag bourbon cigars. Well, right. We we haven't. 
we've even got our own hashtag of explore the pairings, you know, and that's kind of our, we, we coined that term, you know, and we hashtag leaf and grace, mm -hmm. but we've coined the term explore the pairings because but remember, remember in order for that to happen, somebody actually has to look for it. Okay. So everybody start looking for explore the pairings. <laughs> it's one light. <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's you're literally in a mind field that you know when you when people talk about like uh, Bitcoin and they talk about the that that and it's so far out of my world you know buying these NFTs and these little worlds you can create you're literally mm -hmm. creating a world within a world well that's really what we're talking about we're talking about the internet which is a world within a world so I yes. can go down the rabbit hole of starting out looking for cigar pairings and then all of a sudden i'm going somewhere else because think about it if you think about the name and i love the name but how many people are going to search for leaf and grain no one unless they know think about that yeah unless they know and and another thing is like i have a lot of we have had a lot of people say leaf and a and d grain Yep. And we're like, no, it's leaf, the letter N, gray. Right. And we have to make a point to say leaf and gray. Because when you, whenever you look for leaf and gray, a lot of people put the word in and, and it comes up as a cigar shop in Houston. Yep. And we're like, no, we're not that. We're not that. We're the letter N, not and. But then you should say society because that's the company name. Oh, okay. That's the so name. We should have a hashtag. We should have a hashtag. Okay. Because I I'm found like, my, my mind is like blown all over the place. I'm sorry. Good. I'm just like. My, and, my, and that's where I am. Mine too, and I've been doing this for for I've been I've been doing this for for a long time. But that's why I, I was so excited about this because. I've been doing this all from the technical side of it, and you're bringing this out from a, a whole other angle. So I kind of, I kind of want to bring us back around. All right, I've been like chasing rabbit holes, so it's no, my no, fault. I, I, I absolutely, I absolutely <laughs> love this. I mean, because this, this isn't just valuable to us. This is valuable to to everybody who needs to build their brand and to build their marketing and how to really encapsulate upon everything that you need to be doing. But what, one of the things I want to kind of bring back around, because I do want to feature what it is that you do beyond that five-point analysis. So let, let's, let's say that Leaf and Grain Society hires on Cigar Box Marketing as our marketing team to work with us. What's the next step? Okay, so we, we've seen what you, what you can do. We're intrigued. We want to do this. We sign a contract with you guys. Yeah. What, what comes next? Okay, so after we do the five point analysis, we typically run a really super deep dive. And that is an independent consultation using Moz, using Ahrefs, using Google Analytics that basically gives us a roadmap. It's about 50 different points that puts into perspective, not Kathy Paterni from Cigar Box Marketing, those independent analytics that says, and, and, I'll, and I'll put it into real simple terms. Here's where you suck and here's where you're really good. Because we want to point those things out because it does happen. So yeah. once we have this, what's that? I said, yeah, agreed. Okay. So once yeah. we have this roadmap, then we create what we call the digital foundation, which what does that involve? Involve That's your listings, right? Where your listing data is. What is your listing data according to Google? It's your company name, your address, your phone number, and your web address. Because then that little piece right there starts the ball rolling. So we go from like a little P, now we're on the top of the mountain. We want to make sure that all the directories, the search engines, the Google Voice, Alexa. I, uh, you, you guys keep going. I got I to gotta run inside real quick. Go ahead. All these things from your listing information stand strong. That's the number one. Then we look mm -hmm. at, okay. What does your social media profile look like? Are you posting correctly? Are you using the right content? Are you gaining the right followers? Are you liking and sharing, following other people, right? What are you doing? 
It's not, you can't. Oh God, you're spine. scaring me, Kathy. You're scaring me. <laughs> uh, like this, this is my thing. I was like, I'm hoping I'm doing everything right. But now I feel like, holy crap, I'm not doing it right. You've so, started. No, no. You have a great you. foundation. I need you. De Red, you got a great foundation. It's just a matter of tweaking certain things. That's all it is. Just tweaks here and there will really help, right? The listings, right? social media, uh -huh. reviews. We talked about Google business profile. We want mm -hmm. you to have a Google profile and have the reviews. We want you to have the Q&A. We want you to have products. We want you to have services. We want you to have offerings. Website. It's already a WordPress site. Um, is it web optimized? I didn't do the analysis on how long it takes to load in terms of mobile and desktop, but I can guarantee you that for the most part, if your images, because I'm sure Dave knows it, his images are probably web optimized. So we look at that, yeah. right? We want to make sure that they're loading properly, that all the elements that are on, the title tags, all those things. Then we look at, okay, reputation. Are you responding? Do you know what people are saying about you? What is your competition doing, right? We want to also say, are you gaining followers in a way that makes sense on your website? Are people, how fast are they bouncing off, right? What is the bounce rate? What is the retention rate? That's simple. Like, and, and, and I love this. It's like, it's simple. And when you bring it to the point, I'm like, oh my God, yeah, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. But it's just like things that I haven't thought of, you know, oh. it's, it's beautiful. And that's what I'm loving about this. And to bring it, and I, and I want to kind of bring it together because like some other people are like tuning in that have their websites and they have their things. It's just like things I don't think that we, we think about. No. My, our, our bounce rate, our bounce rate is not good. I mean, I mean our, our bounce rate is, is really high. And and I, I just paid for a, for an upgraded package with our host to help increase the the load time to improve the load time. But the load time load time is is not bad. How many seconds or milliseconds? Uh, no, we're in we're in like like two to three seconds. Okay, that's on, good. On it. I mean, it's not bad. It's not bad, but it's it's it can be better. That that there's a there's a, a statistic that we call the first paint. Mm -hmm. The first the first paint is is in that is in that couple of seconds. But that has been because I was we were on a lower uh, service service package with our hosting, so I've just paid for, you know, just subscribed, you know, just improved that. That just got moved over to the new server today. So that that's going to improve. And I was like, you know, as you can tell, I was able to listen to all of that. Yes, all of the, I mean, I, I've, I've got, we are on WordPress as you're talking about. I'm using modules on that that optimizes the images on mm -hmm. that. Good, yep. Um, trying to you know, make sure that we have relative content that's very first and immediate when you see on that and we and the the part the part of the idea for leaf and grain society and this is another thing that that we want to do and this is kind of a personal you know selfish aspect of it for my for myself is leaf and grain to be a magazine style you know where it's education but more of a magazine and that's just because one of my bucket list items has always been to write for a magazine and to own my own magazine I mean, even back in the early 90s here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, the underground music scene was so good, I tried to start my own magazine with that. And so that's always been a bucket list. So yeah, that's kind of a selfish aspect of it, but you know, hey, that's kind of what I want to do. I would say that my biggest suggestion for Leaf and Grain, the website, is there's not a, there's not a call to action. When I get on, it looks like a yeah. new site. And again, this is the most negative thing I could possibly say. It looks like a news site. I don't know where to go. Tell me what I need to do. Tell me what the value proposition is. If I want to subscribe, let me have a, a slide in or a pop-up. Subscribe, learn more, do this. Cigar pairings, spirits pairings, learn more about this, learn more about that. Join our podcast. Give me direction. I, I love that. because that. I know. I'm just like... 
Well, one of the things that we started beta testing within the group, and I've got to get back on that, is, is a newsletter. It is having our own newsletter because I want to bring out, because I was looking at that now, and I, and this is a challenge for us. And so I'm speaking to all of us that that are you know owners of businesses. So our cigar, you know, cigar shops, brick and mortars, cigar brands, everybody. The challenge of it is that we see everything in our own blinders. You know, it's kind of like we've got the horse blinders. So we see very directional and we look at it and go, okay, yes, this is great. This is exactly what I want to do. I can come on there and I know exactly where my cigars are. You know, I know exactly where, where my bourbons are and exactly all of the stuff. Mm -hmm. So trying to separate ourselves from that to view this as what the viewer would be the consumer would be looking at it. That's where the challenge is because when you can do that, then you start seeing it. So I, I separated myself and I was like, well, if I'm coming onto the website myself, what what do I what am I supposed to do? I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna click on this article, the review of Mercury Tough House yeah, State out there and, and read that, but then what? But it's kind of like Joe was saying, he says it's tunnel vision. We do get tunnel vision. Yes. Because it's kind of like whenever I post something, like if I write something and I post it, I'm thinking, okay, this is for beer people. This is for people who smoke, like on their smoker. And it's like, I get that tunnel vision. So therefore that's what I'm going to write towards. I mean, if I, that I, makes sense. I wrote an article, uh, why I'm not a smoker, but I smoke, where I'm talking and con you know talking about the differences between cigarette smoking and cigar smoking, both from a from a social uh, social aspect of it and also the health aspect of it. And myself personally, I thought the article was great. Had it edited, a number of other people read it, thought it was great, posted it out there. And I've had three views out there on it. And so it's like, okay, I know how to drive people, drive traffic to it, but getting them to engage in the content to see who we are more. And so coming up with that call to action really got me on that of how do you know, I need a call to action of not just a featured article that it's there, bam, okay please click on it, but call to action to drive them into it. And also think about this. What is your clickbait message? Like instead of saying what you said as the title, you could have said, again, within reason, why smoking won't be the death of me. Oh, oh. oh. no, smack. There's gold right there, people. So I mean, like, oh, it's, holy crap. Can we it's, just like it's, have you review every article and say, okay, what cap trays should I like, use? But it's perception. When you're standing outside of the box, when you're standing outside of the room looking in, it's different. It's like, and I'll put this yeah. into perspective for our viewers. I'm not going to come in and tell you you have an ugly baby. Right? It's hard. I'm not going to tell you your kid is the ugliest friggin' thing since sliced friggin' toast. Right? Because no one wants to hear that. It's your baby. Because I make beautiful babies. Exactly. Hello. So we yeah. have to be very selective in how we say your shit sucks because we want to help you grow. But I can't come from the perspective of that's the worst goddamn title I've ever heard in my whole entire life. It's boring as shit. I, like, here's my thing I love the fact that you're so, like, you put it, you're so like honest and brutal. And I'm gonna say this to your New Yorker coming out in you because like in Texas, like in the Southern people portion part, are like, oh, that's so beautiful. That's wonderful. But I love that because it's brutally honest and my personality wants brutally honest. And I think Graveyard's personality wants, you know, brutally honest. But it's kind of like also when we're writing it, or we're doing things, we're thinking, okay, how is this going to come across? And I think in the South, we're too like, oh, it's okay. Let's do it this way. But in, in all reality, it needs to be brutally honest. 
Well, like the, even the term bless her heart means you a crazy bitch. Like exactly right. You're cray cray. Get your uh, crap together. Right. Down, down here in Texas, but bless your heart means uh, means a whole lot more graphic than that. I was being nice. <laughs> I know. But I mean, and, and you bring up a great point. And this is what I, this is what I love about you is because I can't tell you how many times and this part of the frustration is, you know, I, I, I'm writing, I write for Whiskey Network magazine and I know. that I write, you know, I write for, for our website. I write for uh, the newsletter as well. And I'm writing a book. And as I'm and as I'm sending out the writings to people, and I'm wanting brutal, honest feedback, and all I get is, "Oh, that's so great! I mean, I just love your writing. I I love the article. I love love this. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I am so I am so gracious for that. But be honest. People. But I'm not growing as a writer that that way i'm not growing as a writer and so really the only brutal honesty that i get feedback that i get on any of my writings is through grammarly <laughs> really okay and, and i pay for a subscription to grammarly you know and it's it's helped out a lot but, but yeah it's not the it's, human factor i know it's, it's not the human so so the you know the title of another article exploration exploration of, of scotch you know, and I, I think I titled of uh, of uh, the the journey the journey of the regions of Scotch. And and I'm gonna say this because I'm like not coming from the marketing. I'm coming from the consumer. Thank you. And I'm like, oh yeah, that really is great, and that makes sense. But then Kathy's like. <laughs> snooze 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 so that's like where i need to grow is to be brutally honest but i can't really be brutally honest because i'm not coming from that aspect and that's what the beauty is of cigar bond is y'all are brutus brutally honest about it because i can't be brutally honest about it does that make well, sense but you can find ways like like what you just said about your scotch exploration. You can say something stupid like is it peat or is it wheat? Like you're you're taking words that, that are she is just like my mind. I'm just like all about like Kathy. I'm just like, ooh, goddess of Kathy. No, but goddess again, it's, it's it's a different perspective. It's where where somebody that's sitting on the outside but has an, a knowledge can come in and say, you know what, I love the concept, but make it make it where I want to go. What's he talking about? What what does that mean? Because the the fastest way to borscht somebody to shit is to just be, be like blah blah blah, right? Remember the peanuts with the school blah 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 blah. Yes, and hundred percent get that because I'm in education. So I get the blah, 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 a lot. Yep. Yep. And, and here, here in, in, in writing these, I'm, I'm trying to come up with, with unique titles of the article. That's not just, that's not just, uh, okay, we're going to talk about I lay scotch now, or we're going to talk about, and, and I'm working on the, the next one for the newsletter where we're going to, I'm going to be talking about uh, the, um, Nicaraguan cigar region. No, you could say, hey, bitch, Nicaraguan. <laughs> What's it about? <laughs> Where's it, Manuel Ortega now? It, it's all it's all it's all about the spice. <laughs> yeah, it's all about yeah. that spice. Ooh. About that spice. Right, okay. exactly. Yeah, what's her name? Um, Megan the singer. All about yeah. that bass and trainer. Megan Trainer. This is yeah. Megan's trainer spice. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that it, I mean, it's like when you, it's like when we talk about it and we're going through it, it's like, duh, common sense. But at the time when we're doing it, it's difficult. For example, if I'm talking about, if I'm smoke, okay, for example, I love, love, love to use my smoker. And I'm talking about different woods and all that stuff. I'm gonna sit there and think, okay, hickory 
pecan, yeah, mesquite. apple, mesquite. Yep. Yeah. It's just like, and it's kind of boring, but you need a ca catchphrase. Right? I got, I got one for you since, since we are after 9 I mean, we're after 9 p.m. At, at, on the East Coast. So we, we, we can step outside of the, the family. The, here's, here's your title. This ain't your morning wood. <laughs> I love it. You got, you nailed it. That's the best of the night. And, and, I, and here's my thing is like, and it's kind of going back is, you know, it's, you want to be classy, but also there isn't, if you're going to say something, I don't want to say it's trashy, but it catches people's attention. Like which wood is the morning wood for your smoker? Like she, like she has just like opened my mind, hundred percent. Because I'm coming from the educational world, and I'm sitting here thinking, okay, what's proper? What's professional? I don't want to offend people. I want people to look at this. But I've learned that through my. Uh, own Instagram, when I show legs and I get a little bit vulgar, it causes more attention. But I don't want to be vulgar to the extreme where people are like, hey, Ash Red, can you send me or can you do a video of you smoking a cigar? See, that's where I'm trying to find the balance between all of this. I agree. I 100% agree. I don't think I'll and ever I, go down that road. And I think it's difficult in the aspect of women versus men sorry yeah. gray beard you're gonna have to be out on this one um because i don't think guys are requesting to, for you to smoke cigars for them yeah no but but i i do get a lot of comments on you know where people will come to me through instagram and you know or message me on on facebook of hey i'm i'm drinking this particular wine or i'm drinking this particular uh whiskey or what have you because you know that's what i specialize in and what what cigar would I pair with? You know, and and I have built I have built my name up, you know, around Graybeard because while while you you two have assets that that I'll never have and never <laughs> never will show, I mean I I do have a, I oh I, yeah I have an impressive beard I, I will say that I I put some work on that. <laughs> And, and I and I will have to agree because like and, and, and it's kind of like you have to know what is current, what's going on, and what people want. And like you know, beards right now are the huge thing. People always want to know how can I grow my beard? How can I make it better? How can I make it massive? That is what people are interested in. So. Well, we're we're coming up on we're coming up on two hours and so we want to be respectful to you. I believe it's been two hours. I, I tell That's you, crazy. Because I, I could go on forever, but I want to be respectful to your time. Yeah. In, in the last last five five or so minutes, let let's hear let's hear your elevator speech, because I know you know what I'm talking about on that. What's what's your what's your elevator speech on cigar box marketing and why? you know, kind of summarize everything that we've been talking about and why somebody should talk to Cigar Box Marketing. Thank you so much, both of you. This has been a really, really enjoyable evening. And you're right, two hours has flown. So let me leave you with this. We believe that Cigar Box Marketing is the cigar industry's best resource to a lasting customer relationship. Now, remember what we said, that customer relationship comes at the end of that customer journey. We help you achieve the opportunity that you need to grow your business, to gain, to nurture and retain your customer base, whether it is a business to business or a business to consumer client. We start off slow, we move at your pace and we provide the tools and resources within the confines of the law that we are dictated to be able to give you the tools you need to succeed. I, I love that. Kathy, thank you so much for this. Let's talk offline about next steps for, for Leaf and Grain. I, I'm, I'm serious. I, I want to talk about next steps for Leaf and Grain because I, I want 
I'm not, and when I say I in this, you know, I'm speaking for Ash Red, I'm speaking for, I'm speaking for Spice Man, and I'm speaking for the amazing team that we have behind the scenes uh, that, that are supporting us. And, and I want to, I want to, I, I got to call them out on this because of my appreciation and my love. They're doing all of this. Yeah. Work it, it's, it, I cannot be more thankful for, for this. You know, we're, we're not to a point where we can pay. We will be there. I know. One day. I know. Soon, we soon, soon. But, but thank you for all of this. Let's talk offline about next steps on this because that I'm I'm investing I'm investing we're all investing time and, and money on this and so I want to take this off to the next step. Would love to have that opportunity to help you. It's been an enjoyable evening and I have to say it's been great to get to know the both of you. And and I'm gonna I'm gonna echo this. It's like right now we don't have a re the revenue, but hey, we'll always pay in six. <laughs> <laughs> Six yes. bourbon spirits, whatever, you know, and and that kind of circles around is like, you know, the beautiful thing about this industry is people are willing to pay with their time, their energy, you know, their six, their spirits, their knowledge. And it's like, to me, I can't believe two hours has flown by, which I'm surprised my children and I have adult children, even though they're adult children, they're still children, if you understand what I mean. I do. I haven't come, haven't come through the door and say, mommy, what's this? Mommy, what's that? And it is just like, my mind is just like, I have brain matter everywhere. Good. I, I can't even, I'm just like. I couldn't be happier God. with that. That makes me, that, that alone, leaving off tonight and being able to, get the juices flown is a beautiful thing. And I have to again, thank you both so much. It's been such a pleasure. I hope your viewers will get something out of this. If anything, be able to take just a few things away that we talked about tonight and help their businesses grow. Well, I definitely think they will. I, There's I, no I, doubt I sure. in my mind. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kathy from Cigar Box Marketing and we appreciate you very much. Thank you. Love you. Good night. Thank you so much. It was so nice to meet you and interact with you. Oh, you too. I'll see you both soon. Yes. Yeah.